Our next talk is paired by Miguel Fonseca and Greg Zolkowski on the evolution and extensibility of Gutenberg. The block editor has come a long way since it was first introduced in the Gutenberg feature plugin. Join Miguel and Greg to learn about how extensibility has evolved from then until now. Engineer and team lead at Automatic, Miguel has worked on Gutenberg since its conception. Previously, he was heavily involved in WordPress.com's new dashboard, Calypso, and contributed to the WordPress customizer early in the 2010s. He loves languages and climbing trees. Husband, father, code wrangler, open source contributor, and basketball fan, Greg, writes JavaScript at Automatic <laughs> and contributes to the WordPress core. Thanks for joining us, YouTube. Take it away. Hello, everyone. I hope you are enjoying this event so far. So my name is Grzegorz Zukowski, and together with Miguel, we want to take you on a journey into the world of extensibility in the block editor. Two days ago, we celebrated the fifth major WordPress series that contains the new way of editing content based on blocks. It's been about 16 months since the initial release of the block editor in the WordPress core, and nearly three years since Gutenberg started as a plugin. It only shows that there is so much to cover as existing APIs have evolved throughout that time. And that's why in this talk, we want to highlight some vital APIs and show how they contribute to a better experience for those who build products and services based on WordPress. We want to encourage you to revisit some other APIs that exist for so long, but we believe they haven't received enough attention so far. We also want to show new ways to extend the core functionality of Gutenberg. And finally, we will present some exciting features that are in active development that need to be battle tested before they land in the next major release of WordPress. There is a large surface of API across the block editor and it grows with every WordPress release. And we can divide them into three major groups. First one is a block API. This is everything that like allows you to create your own blocks. And it contains uh, low level APIs that build the whole experience. So we can distinguish transforms, uh, inner blocks, templates, and there are some uh, new APIs like examples, stack variation patterns. Uh, but that's not all. There is also plugins API. And this is something that allows to build shared logic that is uh, rendered in the whole editor. Uh, so this is so those are part of a UI that you can put inside a given place. So this is something we call semantic fields, which allows us to create some smaller apps that uh, work on some functionality that is common for many blocks. And it uses internally data layer that we will cover later or some like high keyboard shortcuts introduced in the last release. And finally, there is rich text API. So this API is everything that is uh, related to inline editing experience, which is something that makes the whole experience of working with Gutenberg, uh, Gutenberg so appealing. And internally, it contains this uh, capability of custom formats, which uh, allows you to register your, your own ways of editing uh, uh, text inside the editor. So Jeffrey showed some example, it's pretty powerful. And there's uh, there are also inline blocks, there are also ways for uh, splitting blocks into smaller chunks or merging them together. And so there is a lot to cover. However, we can't possibly uh, talk about everything in this talk. We will focus on some forgotten APIs and highlight some recent additions. We are aware that as a plugin and team authors, you will primarily want to build new blocks or customize those that already exist in the default WordPress installation. We also assume that you are familiar with the basics of the block API. That said, specific APIs discussed may make your job easier and help to create a consistent experience that is already familiar to users. But more importantly, when those APIs evolve, your products will get all enhancements with no additional effort. Let's start with some new MP APIs that we want to highlight. So 
one of those is block example. It was introduced in WordPress 5.3, and this solves this issue that when you see the insert there, the blocks in the inserter, it was really hard to distinguish uh, the functionality exposed of the individual blocks because you could see only icon and the title. So we have this preview screen on the right side now. And this is a nice way for plugin uh, authors to provide some meaningful content representation that helps user to pick their blocks. In some cases, like in a case of reusable blocks, it also shows an actual content. The API behind that is just an extension to the register block type existing API. So you provide a new setting field, which is called example, and it allows to uh, overwrite attributes that are used to, like, to uh, generate the block. And it also supports inner blocks that we will see later, which uses template API behind the scenes. Another thing that is quite interesting that was referred already today is block style variation. So this there is an addition to that. There is server side API, which was introduced in WordPress 5.3. So it solves the issue that sometimes you want to have the same block start differently. So instead of creating another block, you just can register such block style. And it uh, integrates with uh, the block transform uh, dropdown or with the sidebar. And it allows to change the style, which applies some you know, CSS uh, code to that. And the API behind that uh, looks like this on PHP side. So there is a method called register block style that takes as a parameter block name. and you need to specify also the uh, label that is displayed in the UI, but more importantly, there is this inline style uh, attribute that, in my opinion, is the most compelling one because it allows you to uh, provide a CSS inline so you don't have to worry about creating all the uh, asset handles and stuff like this, which is quite complex. There's another thing which is called, we call block variation. So Sometimes you may spot some patterns on some of your blocks, some form of overlap in behavior or meaning. Even though the blocks are conceptually different enough to be distinct. This is where block variations shine. We added this API on the client side in WordPress 5.4, and you can think of it as a more sophisticated variation of block style variation. So let me give you some example. Uh, this social icon block is something that we shipped also in core in 5.4 and it is, contains those child blocks that as you can see in the insert it looks like we would have to register a ton of blocks however it's a single block and the difference is that it the, each representation itself uh, to the user as a distinct block so uh the api for that is just we just we need to register a list of those variations, which are uh, then exposed in the inserter. And it's so all automated. So you need to provide the title icon and the starting attribute. So it also allows you to have this uh, uh, customized experience for every variation. And again, it's similar to the example uh, API. So you use register block type, uh, and you can uh, provide this variation list there. This API is much more complex. It, there, it supports different cases. In this case, you see that I used quote block again. However, when I insert it in now, it first it has different icon, different name, and also it looks different when it's inserted because behind the scenes it applies a style, block style variation. So you, as you can see, those APIs, they built up on each other. So it's quite nice how it all evolves. And the code uh, itself looks like this. So there is also the standalone method called register block variation on the client side that allows you uh, to customize existing blocks. And uh, the trick to overriding the default experience is by using is default flag. That's when set to true, just uh, removes the default 
uh, log type. And the style name is uh, the style variation is applied by using class name. And it also allows to append more variations. So you can use the, the bare one, also the different variation. And as you can see, this one applies some background color and some drop cap is enabled by default. And the API for that is again very similar to the previous example. It's just different set of attributes. There are also some experimental features uh, that are still in works. And this is part of the Gutenberg plugin, what you will see now. And there is this scoping uh, exposed for this uh, feature. So in columns, as you can see, there's only, only one entry in the inserter. However, when you go to the columns, there is this uh, placeholder that allows to pick different layouting for the columns block. So as you can see, this is this custom example as uh, some you know three three columns and uh, some specific uh, layout and this is something that we are looking into adding as a uh, automated feature so you would re register the log variation using a uh, scope block and that would mean that do, it would be automatically wired with the uh, block and provide this provide this placeholder uh, however it's still something that we are looking for feedback and as you can see, the, there is this inner blocks uh, field used here, which allows us to override the, like the, the default behavior of the columns block. I mentioned uh, reusable blocks here. Let's spend time now discussing this exciting feature introduced in WordPress 5.0 that often feels overlooked. It's a user-facing feature, but they truly are blocks. It's the original block building tool that doesn't require any coding. So here we have example uh, when we edit some content, apply some styli styling, and uh, we decided it would be nice to use in other articles. As in fact, this is an example for the collection of articles. So it's pretty helpful. Instead of copying that over to other posts, we can convert that to reusable blocks using UI. We just need to apply a name and it will be uh, exposed in the inserter. So once it's saved, let's go to another page uh, and try to use the same block. So as you can see, we have a couple of posts already and uh, we just want to uh, include that in other uh, areas as well. So we just look for that, it's found here and it's inserted. And we can also edit it from here. The best part that all the changes applied, they are synced with other posts. So if you want to add fifth post uh, to this series, then it's just will be reflected in this new one. And all we don't have to go back to every single post and edit it manually. And there is also block patterns. Uh, Matthias already mentioned this new feature. Let's revisit that because we believe that it's quite important. It's entirely different in behavior and presentation to the Rosawa blocks or block variation. They are saved locally up for insertion and they don't exist globally. So they are just a collection of black blocks that you insert with starter content that is designed to be changed by the user to fit the context when they are integrated. And I also have some example, as, as you could hear, it's in, uh, exposed in the, is, in the sidebar on the uh, right side at the moment. However, it is a subject of change. It will be integrated in the, in the inserted. This is the custom pattern that I have integrated. As you can see, you insert that and then you can modify it on the fly. So it's, it's pretty handy. Uh, if you want to have some, you know, pre-constructed version of the parts of your page. And the API for that looks as follows. So there is a register pattern uh, function that is exposed on the PHP side. You need to provide a name for your pattern. And there is a settings object that where you define the title visible in the UI and the content. The content, it's something that's used uh, serialized version of a post. So it's more or less 
you could manually craft your uh, your uh, pattern by using the block editor, copying in constant and passing inside this content. And there is also a set of existing APIs that we want to revisit and talk about some additions added to them. So one of them is parent and child blocks. This client side API was introduced in WordPress 5.0. And the whole idea is that sometimes you want to have a better control of whether some blocks are displayed in a different, different uh, in a given context. So this is a good example. So you see social icons again when you go to the uh, like to the child blocks of those uh, block, then you can see that it the search is narrowed down only to social icon. And this is pretty nice because it helps user to uh, have a better experience because they don't have to go through all the uh, blocks to uh, accomplish their tasks. And also, this is how it looks inside the, the block editor when you go to the select mode. So there is a collection of social icons inside a social icon block. So it's a nice way of grouping some functionality together. And the API for that is simple. And uh, there is uh, this parent field used during register block type call uh, that allows you to specify the parent that is uh, meant to be exposing uh, those blocks in the inserter. And also what's important to know here that by doing so, the, the, it also limits the blocks that are available from the parent, so it's like a two-way connection. And now I'll pass it to Miguel, but we will have some technical things to do. Yes, I need to take over. So let's see, share. And you should now be seeing the slides. Can you confirm, Grzegorz? Yes, yes, you can go. Okay, so let's see. Oops. Okay, we have something malfunctioning here. Bear with me. Okay. Let's go. Okay, thanks. Um, social icons are just one example of blocks uh, taking advantage of the wider inner blocks API. This API also allows container blocks to impose a number of rules on their inner blocks. So for instance, uh, the allowed blocks option allows a container to limit the block types that should exist inside of it. In this case, we modify the column block to only allow image and paragraph blocks. Notice how when I open the inserter inside of a column, I can now only choose from those two types. There is one extra trick. If only one type of block is allowed, such as here, where we only allow image, then when I try to add a new block to my column, I won't even see the inserter. I automatically get a new image. A block can also define a template uh, for its inner blocks. And this is part of the template API that was introduced in WordPress 5.0. Here we have a block representing a book. A book block contains inner blocks. The template for its inner blocks is the following. One image, one heading corresponding to the book's title, and one paragraph corresponding to a summary of the book. The result is that when I add a new book block to my post, I immediately have my book block preloaded with those three elements. Notice how I was able to provide placeholders for the title and for the summary and how my image is already aligned to the right. On top of this, templates support locking, which is a way of specifying uh, whether the inner blocks are allowed to be moved, removed, or have new ones added. Here, we indicate that our inner blocks should be fully locked meaning that in the editor, I am not able to move the inner blocks of my book block. Inner blocks have 
are instrumental to making the editor capable of handling complex content and composable blocks. Next up are a couple of experimental pieces of this API that are only available in the Gutenberg plugin. Let's look at the navigation block. It's made up of tiny blocks, each one representing a menu link. So here, about, contact block. Most content in the block editor um, grows vertically. Uh, a long form post is made up of paragraphs, uh, each one placed under the previous one. Uh, the columns block is uh, another example of stacking content vertically. This navigation block is different in that in its current form, each link sits to the right of the previous one. So it's safe to assume that some of the interactions in this block will be different because of this horizontality. Luckily, we have a way to express this in Gutenberg. Uh, we can simply let uh, inner blocks declare an option named mover direction to be horizontal. The result is that the editor interface will correctly represent uh, horizontal mover arrows and thus moving links around feels natural. It's a very small detail, but it speaks to the versatility of inner blocks and it paves the way for things such as uh, a navigation block that could adapt to horizontal shapes and vertical. But we can take a step further, still in the same block, in making editing more natural to users. By using the capture toolbars option, we ensure that the editor will only show the blocks toolbars, uh, the inner blocks toolbars, as if they belong to the outer block, the navigation container. And I think you've seen this with the Matthias demos. No notice how the contents of the toolbar changes depending on whether we are working on the whole menu block or just an individual link. But the placement of the toolbar doesn't change. The goal is to let users experience a cohesive menu editing experience instead of just dealing with a fragile assortment of blocks. Moving on, let's talk about a specific editor tool called Block Navigation. This again was shown in Matthias and Matt's demo. Um, and is unrelated to menu navigation. Uh, it refers to this dropdown that allows us to get a full view of the blocks in our content. If we are working on a block that has children, the dropdown will instead reveal the hierarchy of those inner blocks. So in this case, we see our two column layout made up of different levels of inner blocks. What is interesting is that blocks with, with children can define how they should appear within the dropdown. Now, normally, each block is represented by its type, uh, so paragraph, image, etc. But going back to our example with the navigation links, we can uh, set these to be represented by their inner content, that their title. Uh, this is what the experimental label option is doing in this snippet of code. So the result is instead of just navigating, uh, instead of just saying navigation link, we see the actual name of the link. The result is that we can now conveniently use block navigation tool to get a deep view of our site's menu. And we can quickly select and edit menu items. So to recap, uh, these are just a few APIs. There are many more, including how to actually make new blocks. Uh, but today we focus on APIs that in one way or another um, reuse existing blocks and also APIs that deserve more love, I think. Um, so in the end, this multitude of related APIs allows us to make uh, the best choices in the name of user experience. Uh, for instance, um, very visual arrangements of blocks make more sense as block patterns as we've seen a bunch of times now while uh, specific functional configurations of blocks make more sense as block variations, as was the case with social icons, uh, as could be with embeds, etc. So now that we've covered some fundamental interfaces, let's look at a concrete case with third-party blocks uh, where we create these blocks to do some project management, uh, letting users manage task lists and deadlines 
These blocks are named task and project status. As we will see, they take advantage of a number of interesting APIs that we haven't even covered. Let's start by adding some tasks. Notice how each task corresponds to a tiny, a tiny single block. There's no need for a container. And as a user, you just press Enter to start a new block. This is thanks to a rich text API known as OnSplit. Now let's add a project status block somewhere on the page. As you can see, adding tasks and changing their completion status will reflect immediately on the project status block. And this is an example of blocks using the data layer in order to react to other blocks instead of using inner blocks. Now, despite the minimal look and feel of these tools, all of this is powered by blocks, which means that we can move our blocks around, edit advanced settings in the sidebar, et cetera. And of course, we could even turn all of this into a reusable block and show it in different pages if you wanted to. So to recap, one, small individual blocks are better than big complicated ones. Um, the principle is the same as for social icons, but instead of using inner blocks, um, blocks are leveraging the data layer, which in this case offers a, a more natural experience for project management. Three, users are already familiar with the editor UI. Uh, this is similar to the navigation block. Uh, users recognize the limits of the block. They recognize the toolbar, et cetera. So by having smaller blocks, the UI can be that of the editor, and the users will know that. Finally, blocks can be contextual. Uh, as we just, see, just saw, they can react to other blocks. They can read from other sources, such as post meta, et cetera. Um, for instance, what if the project's name and uh, characteristics were part of post meta. Blocks can do that, and they can do that as well with site options. So what can we expect in the future? Well, full site editing and customization are, are coming to WordPress this year, and you've had all the talks about this. Um, I'd just like to say that thanks to these block, to the block standard as a whole, and to these APIs, uh, the editor can understand and orchestrate all kinds of content and site customizations. Um, you just saw Tammy uh, giving you everything you need to know about global styles and blocks need to accommodate this. Um, but there's more than just global styles and full site editing that will benefit from this. Like in the future, I think we can expect better contextuality and reusability of blocks. And um, again, Matthias alluded to this earlier. What if the gallery block, the one in core, uh, were just a container of image blocks? It's already possible, technically, but we want to further develop these APIs and especially the editor interactions in order to offer users the best experience because that's, that's the thing that matters. So to conclude, um, blocks are customiz customizable in various degrees. We just saw styles, variations, uh, and then um, even assortment of blocks can become patterns and things like that. Blocks are highly composable. I think we've seen a number of examples about this. Um, small semantic APIs go a long way. Uh, it does mean that there's a greater number of APIs to learn, but each one is simple and future-proof. The fact that it's future-proof is very important, and this combines with the fact that they are very semantic. Uh, it has a few consequences. One is that um, it, lets, it lets us let the block editor work for us and for our users. Uh, we've seen examples with the way that uh, the editor handles nested blocks, um, the way that it hides uh, child blocks in the editor, in the inserter, et cetera. The second thing is that as the editor improves over, over time, so will our blocks. And an example is what happened when uh, 
the block inserter is entirely bypassed when only one allowed there's only one allowed type of block for a given container this was an optimization that was added after the fact and any consumer of the api automatically gained that benefit after so all of the code snippets we've seen today are part of the wider block api hopefully our examples were compelling enough for you as a developer and as a user uh, i invite you to look up all three of these api families so that is block plugin and rich text and i really look forward to seeing all of your inventions um, thank you very much i am, yeah come find us uh Grzegorz is at uh, gziolo.pl for Poland, and I am um, at lambda.blog without the B. Uh, and also come find us on Core Editor, the Slack channel in WordPress, and in the GitHub for Gutenberg. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both, Greg, Miguel. That was a wonderful talk. Uh, just as you mentioned, Tammy's talk just before really uh, showed a lot of the advantages that users will have inside of Gutenberg and all these APIs now are really giving the developers a huge advantage to customize the way they want Gutenberg to react. Um, we do have some questions lined up, so I'll jump into those if you both don't mind. Let's see, our first one is from Lee. Lee asks, is there a way to use core blocks within custom blocks without using inner blocks? <laughs> this is a tricky question. <laughs> <laughs> they assume that it's not possible. Like the whole idea of using inner blocks is that you get this UI out of the box. So all the movers, all the drag and drop experience and stuff like that, this. And I mean, technically, probably you could find a way to overcome that. However, it's not designed this way. So I don't know, Miguel, maybe I'm missing something obvious, but. You know, um, I don't have much to add. Maybe the, line, uh, the thing about contextuality, right? And uh, like for full site editing, a block will need to know whether it's part of a specific post or whether it's tied to the site whether we're in design mode and the block should be a placeholder or should be actually showing actual content. Blocks will need to understand where they are and they will know how to adapt to that. So I, maybe there's a way if core blocks start to take advantage of that so that they know if they're being used in a normal context and in which they should just go with the default behavior or whether they should adapt. But nothing, nothing is done. It's, it, it's something that I think is feasible with blocks. And so if you're interested in- nice in reusing core blocks that way you should get involved so i see comment from riyadh saying about block editor provider so he suggesting that you could embed your own block editor inside your block <laughs> so whoa <laughs> we just <went laughs> like, you know like like inception the movie <laughs> there you go <laughs> Let's see we have another question from uh david david asks are there plans for a core flow to extend taking advantage of full screen real estate more than just the sidebar and not a modal overlay? For example, some document level settings outside blocks could benefit from this. Yeah, so maybe I would take that because I have some experience. So some plugins, they, what they do is just use CSS to, you know, to make the sidebar bigger Probably we are using that also in Gutenberg plugin for block patterns. And yeah, initially we wanted to do that. However, there, there are a lot of implications when you try doing that, like navigation. I mean, mostly about navigation with the browser supported features like, you know, history, uh, because it takes whole screen. So now is this question whether it should be supported this way or not. So we, abandon this uh, this approach for start and we never get back to the, to it mostly because we are now you know fully focused on full site editing so 
it was no longer a priority. We would definitely want to get back to that. And maybe some someone would like to explore that as we you know work on the full site ADD. Yeah. My uh my favorite part of both these answers have both been please contribute more. <laughs> <laughs> if you're interested in doing that, contribute. <laughs> one more question. Yeah, I'm sure there oh. oh just, just let oh, me right. say more once more. And there is an issue with that that is like you know two or three years old that has some mock-ups, so this is definitely the long chat uh, there, so we can find it. Yeah, there was a discussion a while ago, actually a long time ago, about annotation support, which we have uh, as a stub in, in Gutenberg, um, but obviously the idea was how can we have full annotations, uh, kind of like Google Docs commenting, um, which would be an example of expanding outside of the sidebar, but still around the content. So there's room to develop APIs there. Yeah. OK, and one more question for you both. Jamie asks, how much will you be building out the blocks PHP API versus React JS only? Is there any plan to make it fully featured for scratch block building? I think there are a few ways to interpret this question. Um, so my thought process is PHP APIs can mean a number of things. Um, Gregor showed the example of uh, style variations, which were added early on as a client-side API that is in JS. And uh, recently, we added just the same counterpart in PHP, which just because it's easier to set it up from the perspective of a themer, you can just call that. But I think in the case of this question, it's more about how can I build blocks by only using PHP, right? That that is the interpretation. So if so, I think it will be it'll become easier, but it will never be ideal. Or at least this is my personal opinion. Um, it's it's important to note, and Gregor was heavily involved in this um, because of the the mobile apps project to reuse Gutenberg. Um, to build their UI, we, we need to make sure that the APIs are semantic and also free of web type assumptions. Uh, and also um, things like calling the API sidebar, it only makes sense in a wide desktop. The sidebar would be something else in a, on a mobile phone. And so it's it's I'm, I'm taking this detour because to solve the problem of mobile, we will need what we call primitives, which is a common language, a common set of um, almost like UI atoms that we can say, okay, my UI is built with a card, with a view inside, with a thing, et cetera. And by moving in that direction, it will be easier to describe our UIs as something more static and thus something that could be afraid in PHP. And I expect to see solutions in the ecosystem trying to do that. But I honestly think that you need to be closer to the metal, which in this case has to be JS for a very fluid experience. Hmm. So, But the goal is to make JS as easy as possible and as descriptive as possible. Cool. Yeah, so let me add something more to that. So my, in my sure. opinion, the goal is to uh, like concentrate on creating on very small blocks, I mean, like in the functionality wise and compose them more. So the example that yeah. uh, Miguel said about gallery block that, you know, could be reused as like, a, like a built like, a, a, you know, container with image blocks inside. And, uh, you know, we want to like in, improve that to ways of creating this parent child uh, relationships. So uh, this also, is something in, that happening in parallel to other projects like Global Styles, which will allow you to use uh, some config files on the server side. And another thing that we are exploring now is block editor features. So sometimes you don't want to see some um, controls like, I don't know, font size or uh, colors or whatever, or just change how they look like. So the idea would be that by default, there, everything is on, but you can, uh, you know, like tune that on the server side by saying, okay, I don't want this one 
on this block, on this block, on this block. And then this way, you know, you don't have to uh, worry so much about it. And in general, we are going more towards having uh, like uh, having a lot of controls out of the box that are set and you you should get get control how it looks like in your on your instance or WordPress. So I don't know, it doesn't answer the question, but it just shows the direction that we just want to make the building blocks experience much more easier. Yeah, I think that information is still really valid and helpful. It looks like there was one more question here. Is there a PH ver ver PHP version of the register block variation function? So there are two answers to that. So first of all, so there is register block type which allows to register block on the server, and we even are working on a like a, on a structure which is a block JSON, which is a, like a config file that allows to share the same metadata between the server and the client. However, some parts of that, like the edit implementation, the the thing that you see inside the block editor or transforms or uh, the API Miguel sh showed about the accessible level. Those are using JavaScript code, so they cannot be ported to PHP. However, there are plugins which bridge that, so they provide, they provide such like, you know, functionality and allow you to use something that's called dynamic blocks and just render that. However, this is doesn't provide a native experience because you are creating HTML site on the server, then you need to send it to the uh, you know, to the client, so it takes time. The references you see some blinks in the code, so that's why it's really hard to provide a, a viable PHP API that covers all the use cases you might have. All right, thank you both so much, Greg, Miguel. This was a great talk and a lot of information here. Um, but at, just to let everybody know, at the top of the hour will be our next talk with Yon and Pablo. And that'll be coming up in about 16, 17 minutes. So thank you, everybody. Thanks, See you in a minute. It was a pleasure. Thank you.